Welcome back. We are here on eTero and this is going to be my daily forecast for Monday, February 1st, 2021. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us over at Patreon if you want to get access to our full technical analysis, our signal service, and also our online trades and courses. The link is down below. You're very welcome to join. So we'll start by looking at the foreign exchange market, the cryptocurrency market, and then we'll look at the commodities market and precious metals market. So let's look at, um, at the US dollar index first. And on Friday, and basically last week, we were rallying quite substantially in the US dollar. So it has been on a rallying on a rally basically from the bottom here, roughly 89.13. So we reached up towards 90.85, that is basically where we peaked right here, just below the 50 moving average. However, on, on Thursday, we pierced the uh, 50 moving average and yet again on Friday. At the moment, we have settled in between the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average. Question is whether or not we are going to uh, go down from here or if we continue this rally. We have tried to pierce the 50 moving average several times in the past, for example, here and here, this entire area was back in September, October, and uh, in the beginning of November, and then we just fell apart. So m one of the main reasons why we see this um, um, see this rally is because we're not talking about stimulus. As soon as there's going to be a talk about stimulus, uh, there is going to be um, a decline in the US dollar. So in the long run, the US dollar will continue to depreciate. That would be really strange if it didn't. You will have all this money being pumped into the system, and that should actually work against the US dollar. But occasionally, you will see these rallies, and that will also have major implications for, example, the indices, stocks, um, commodities, precious metals, and so on. When this goes up, everything else tends to go down. So the stocks have, for example, been rallying since the beginning of November, and now they're having a pullback. So they fell roughly uh, four to six percent last week, and whether or not they continue falling, that is to be seen. If this basically starts falling again, then we'll probably see a rally in the, the indices and stocks, and also in gold and oil, for example. So we'll start by looking at the uh, Great British Pound. US dollar. And as you can see, we are in this really nice channel here. Actually, the bottom of this market is the 50 moving average. And you could also enter this market at the 20 exponential moving average. So it has bounced off the 20 exponential moving average uh, more often than the 50. So if you can get the chance to buy at the 50, uh, when it basically touches the 50, that is basically your probably your best entry. Um, we haven't seen a lot of movement here. It has been really resilient uh, towards the uh, appreciation of the US dollar. And that is that is really good news for, uh, for the Great British Pound and US or this currency pair. Uh, you, I wouldn't expect this to fall all the way down towards the 50 moving average uh, when considering the US dollar has been appreciating the last uh, few trading days. But at the moment, we're trading at 13.69. And uh, yes, it is just a matter of buying when it touches the 50, 20 exponential and buying a lot when it touches the 50 with a stop loss underneath the 50. And long term target is 14. So 1.4, that is probably something we'll see in the next month or two. So let's look at the US dollar again. So there was a lot of movement in this currency pair. We actually broke through uh, the previous channel. So we had, we've been within this channel for a really long time and we actually broke the resistant area. So we also have a lower, um, lower channel here, but that's not really interesting at the moment because the question is how far this will rally. Will it rally all the way up to the 200 moving average? That is to be seen. We are getting uh, fairly overstretched here. We can look at, for example, the, the Bollinger Bands, how far we are actually above the Bollinger Band. So we can see that we are 
actually quite far above, above the Bollinger Band. And the question also be whether or not we'll break below this uh, former resistant line again. So we'll have a pullback towards this resistant line. And if we break through it, then you could probably we could probably go back into the channel that we were, or this could basically break towards the resistant line and then bounce. And if that is the case, then there's a huge um, there's a huge uh, possibility that we will actually start trending upwards. So if this will act as res uh, support now instead of resistant, then we can actually go and trend upwards. But 200 moving average will be a massive resistance for this currency pair. We can see that we have already started the pullback because we are getting very overstretched here in the bullish band. And uh, yes, it will be really interesting basically where this opens when the market opens again. Technical indicators are all very bullish at this point. MACD, Stochastic, CCI, and also the RSI are all pointing to higher levels. But when you're this uh, far outside of the bullish band, expect a pullback at least towards this resistance line, of roughly at 104.19. We are on the edge of being overbought. We are 64. So yes, it's going to be interesting to see what basically happens here. So let's look at the euro US dollar. So you can see that we are at the edge of the 50 mm week average here. We're quite far away from the bottom of the bullish band. Technical indicators are either flat or um, or bullish at this point. So if the US dollar uh, starts to depreciate, you will see a massive rally in this. So just pay attention what happens in the US dollar. If this um, if the US dollar starts appreciating, then this will fall even further. Then we'll most likely go to these previous highs here. That is roughly at 1192. And lower than that, we'll head towards the 200 moving average. We haven't basically been at the 200 moving average for a very long time. Last time we previously crossed the 200 moving average was back in April last year. But 50 moving average is holding at the moment. We're trading just above the 50, underneath the 20 exponential. Um, so we'll see basically what happens here. It is, um, in my case, I would guess that we'll basically rally from here. If we do that, then we have the highs here of 1234. That is basically going to be our target. Long-term target is be it will be 1250. So let's look at the Aussie US dollar. So this fell quite aggressively on Friday and also on Thursday. We fell way below the Bollinger Band here and then pulled back. And then on Friday, we continue this fall. So there is going to be a bottom here. I think that the 50 moving average will be a, uh, will be massive support for this currency pair. We're on the edge of the Bollinger Band. Technical indicators are fairly mixed. Their effects actually uh, very bearish at this point, but the CCI is turning around quite aggressively. We're underneath minus 100, so it's still bearish. Stochastic is bearish, MACD is bearish, and the uh, RSI is also bearish. So we could be heading towards the 50 moving average, and that is at 0 0.7581, and then we could see this rally continue. So long-term target is 0 0.80. That is where we are most likely going to head to. Head to. Um, I don't see this falling below the 50 moving average, but we'll see. It kind of depends also on the US dollar index, but buying it at the 50 moving average at 0 0.7573 with a stop loss underneath the 50 moving average, that should be a fairly good trade. So let's look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar. So you can see that we have tried to rally both on Thursday and also on Friday, and we pierced both the 50 moving average and the, and the bullish band, and now we are pulling back quite aggressively. So both for the US dollar, no, for the Aussie dollar and also the Canadian dollar, oil has significant uh, uh, influence on their currencies, as uh, or also on the and the, the demand for you know, for precious metals and so on in in Australia will basically increase the value of the Aussie dollar. So as those 
uh, precious metals and commodities, basically um, the demand for them declines, then the demand for their currencies also declines in the value as well. So there, those are also factors that play in there, not just the US dollar index or US dollar. So we saw oil, for example, uh, on the decline, copper being on the decline, and so on. And all of those things uh, are also factors that play in, in these currency pairs. So at the moment, US dollar, Canadian dollar is trading between the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average. We did touch the 20 exponential and then pull back. If you look at technical indi uh, indicators, MACD is bullish at this point. Stochastic is bullish. The CCI is turning around quite aggressively. And so is RSI. So we could see this pull back. So we have been in a downtrend for a very long time. And every single time we have basically touched the upper part of the Bulger band, for example, here and also here. And we can go way back here and here. It has fallen quite drastically. So just keep that in mind. Um, it usually goes gradually to the upside or gradually to the downside. When we have these rallies that basically pierce the, uh, the upper part of the bullish band, we have a very aggressive uh, move to the downside. So we could be witnessing that um, in the next coming days. So let's look at the cryptocurrency market. So look at Bitcoin. So most of the cryptocurrencies have been uh, basically on a decline for the last two, three weeks. You can see that Bitcoin um, reached the top of the uh, of its value here at uh, 41,660. A massive move to the upside here. And since then, it has declined all the way down towards the 50 moving average. So you see this major move here from uh, 31 all the way to uh, 37, I think, 38. That was basically Elon Musk putting out a tweet. So apparently tweets of uh, very influential people and very powerful people have major effects on the markets. And uh, whether or not you take that as market manipulation, um, probably. Um, there probably should be some kind of law that prevented these people from basically affecting the market in this way which I'm pretty sure that they actually are doing. Donald Trump certainly did that when he was in office. So, so, but since then, it has been in decline yet again. So even though these uh, very influential people put out uh, tweets that basically rallied, rallies these markets, they fall down really fast. And that is not a good indication for, for Bitcoin. What we can see, uh, say at least, is that a 50 moving average is holding. And as long as that is the case, we'll probably go gradually to the upside. 40,000 will most likely be our target. However, if we break the 50 moving average, we are going to go significantly lower. So 30,000, 40,000 will most likely be our long term target. 30,000 is at the moment kind of the bottom. But if we break the 50, we can see this go to 27,000 to 23,000 and lower than that. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement for Bitcoin, we can see that the first one is here at 30,000. Second one is here, 26,000. And then the last one is here at 22,000. So I would not be surprised if we fell down to this level here. It would actually be a very good thing because then you could basically enter in a lower uh, price level and well you could basically double your money when it goes back to 40,000 um, yes but overall for Bitcoin it has um, the highest value but it's not the cryptocurrency that has been growing most the recent days most of the other bigger uh, cryptocurrencies have also uh, been gaining speed and they have actually been outperforming Bitcoin if you look at technical indicators, at least for Bitcoin, uh, they are fairly mixed. They're either flat or they are bearish at this point. So it'll be interesting to see. Another test of the 50 moving average, a break of, the, of that, that could open the door all the way down to 22,000. So let's look at the Ethereum. 
So as you can see, Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin the last two, three weeks. Uh, 20 exponential moving average is actually the bottom of this market. We have not been trading underneath the 20 exponential for a very, very long time. We have to go all the way back here. This was in, uh, in November or the beginning of November when we were trading at $385 for, for Ethereum. Now we're trading at uh, $1,334. So it has been absolutely parabolical, uh, but it has been trading flat in recent days. A fall below the 20 exponential opens the door to the 50. That's at roughly at 1,000. And a break below the 50 opens the door to the 750. And also the 200 moving average at the 550. So this could move to the downside. That is possible. But at the moment, it is outperforming Bitcoin and most of the other cryptocurrencies as well. And the 20 exponential is holding really, real well. So the next uh, target for Ethereum is 1500. That is the next target. And then 1750 and beyond that. So at this moment, it is going gradually to the upside. Actually, much better that it goes this gradually and the 20 exponential is holding this well because it is uh, easier to trade it. So let's look at XRP. I had actually deleted this from my list, but now we can see movement in this cryptocurrency. It has been absolutely parabolical. Whether or not this is one of those cryptocurrencies that have been affected of the Reddit chat or so on, or so on that is to be seen, but you have seen other um, <laughs> cryptocurrency like it Dark coin, I think it's called, has been rallying because of, I, I think it's a chat on Reddit as well. So whatever these people are chatting about on Reddit, those things are apparently exploding to the upside. So we have seen this massive move for uh, for XRP. While Bitcoin has been on decline and, and uh, Ethereum has in, increased, XRP has also increased. So we have almost doubled the, the last uh, three trading days. We went from... 0.26 and now we're trading at 0.745 so there is a heck of a lot of money to be earned in this cryptocurrency however there's also a heck of a lot of money that can be lost trading this cryptocurrency but i did say that i was going to consider buying into this when it broke the 50 moving average and when it started to bounce from the 50 moving average we are not there yet we are need to need a pullback towards the 50 and to see whether or not that holds. If that is the case, then yes. This is certainly something that you actually can put a little bit of money into because if it will in probably five, 10 years from now will be worth 100 or $500, then you will certainly make up a lot of money from that small investment. And that is probably what people are looking for for these minor cryptocurrencies. It is not possible to gain that amount of money in, for example, on in Bitcoin at the moment because it's valued at over 30,000. 30, These are valued of 0 0.30. So the value to the upside is enormous if they start rallying like Bitcoin and Ethereum and so on and so on. So that's probably the reason why people are buying into this. However, at this point, it is significantly overbought. It is very overstretched. If you look at uh, at uh, Bollinger Band, we can see that we are way outside of the Bollinger Band. Last time we were at was here. It fell all the way from 77 and all the way down to uh, 0 0.16. So just keep that in mind. If it gets out uh, of the Bollinger Band here, it can drop quite drastically and lose um, more than half of its value in very, very short time. But a pullback towards the 50, if that holds, then that is a really good sign that this could trend slowly to the upside. So let's look at uh, Litcoin. So Litcoin has been falling. Um, this was, was looking really promising due to the fact that it, it did not have this parabolical move as most of the other cryptocurrency did. It did, value, it did grow significantly. It doubled in value, for example, in, uh, in uh, two months' time. But since then, it has dropped all the way down to 120 
nine at this current stage. So bottom of the bullish band here was major support. The 50 moving average is also acting support as supportive. Question is will, will be whether or not we rally here from the 50 moving average. If we start breaking below the 50 moving average and it becomes a resistant instead of support, then that is a very bad sign. Then we could fall all the way down to the 200 moving average. I would guess that 100 would be a major support as this was major risk, uh, support back here. Uh, but break below these areas here, that opens the door to 200. I don't think that it's going to happen. I think that we're going to rally up towards 150 and then target these previous highs again. But um, at this point, technical indicators are fairly bearish for this cryptocurrency, so it could actually fall even further. So let's look at NEO. So as you can see, we also had this major move to the upside up towards the $28 and then fell all the way down to $20. Um, 50 moving average is acting as support. We reached the bottom of the bullish band here. Then we actually get all the way down to the 50. But 50, 200, right underneath, that should be major, major support for this cryptocurrency. So this is usually called the Chinese NEO, uh, not, not, the, uh, not the Chinese NEO, but the Chinese Ethereum. So it has the same, it is basically in the same market and it's, it's competing against Ethereum. And um, I've been very bullish on this due to the fact that I think the Chinese are may, way more into cryptocurrency than we are here in the West. We have just been focusing on Bitcoin as a uh, as something to trade and to to uh, earn money on they are actually focused on this as a way of life they seeing it as a part of their economy a part of their society and um, something that probably is not going to go away um, anytime soon it is just going to be bigger and bigger and therefore i'm fairly more bullish on this cryptocurrency than any other cryptocurrency that is out there just because the market over in, in Asia is enormous. And if this becomes the way that the Chinese basically do their transactions and so on, then this will be worth at least the same as Bitcoin is worth today. So it'll be really interesting to see where this is going the next five to 10 years. Um, my guess will be a heck of a lot higher than $22. Um, $22. This is probably going to go much, much, much higher. If you look where it basically started, it was way up here. So that wasn't even this a daily chart. We can look at the weekly chart and it will show it much better. So it was way up here, 134. Um, it was. So, yes, if it goes back to those levels, then there is a lot of money to be earned in this cryptocurrency. But if you look at where we are most likely going, um, we, the 50, 20 exponential moving average is acting as resistant. A fall towards the 50 moving average at roughly $19, $20. That should be your entry point for a buy in. Target here should be the highest here of 28. So that's almost, uh, yeah, that is a fairly, fairly uh, good profit. But I would basically consider just holding this for several years. If it falls towards these levels here, you probably won't see this again. I don't see this falling below the 200 moving average uh, without this market completely falling apart at some point. So, so 50 moving average is the bottom at this point. And um, that is probably as cheap as you will get this um, ever again. Probably. So let's look at the commodities market and the precious metals market. So we'll start by looking at oil. So... Oil did fall quite drastically on, on Friday session. We did rally up towards uh, uh, $53, and then we fell towards the middle of the Bollinger Band, and now we're trading just about the uh, 20 exponential moving average as well. So if you look at technical indicators for oil, they are basically looking very, very dreadful. But we are, we are above support. So 20 exponential has been a major, major support in this market. We did get outside here and we pulled back, just trading technically sideways, a little bit of downslope, but technically sideways into the, the 20 exponential moving average. 
And I would say that it is very likely that will pop to the upside from here. Um, if we were going to see a major move to the downside, it would probably have happened already. So if the US dollar, for example, starts to depreciate, which is very likely that it will do, then we'll see oil start rallying to the upside. And 55 will most likely be our short-term target. That is, uh, that is only $3 from here. And after that, 60 will probably be the highest target that we'll get to in the near future before we'll see this pulling back. So I could see this market trading in between um, somewhere between $60 and $50 uh, for the foreseeable future, like it did prior to the coronavirus. So it was trading uh, at a highs here, roughly at 65, the very, very highs, and at the lows of roughly at 50. So um, it usually trades in a 10 to $50 range, and that is most likely where we are going to head back to. Even though the fundamentals for the world economy are not there at the moment, this is most likely where we're going anyway. So, so speculation has probably been the main reason why we have been rallying this far. So, for example, vaccines was the first part of this, then was the news of uh, stimulus, and since then we haven't had any vac good vaccine news, really. The last vaccine that came out wasn't really good news, and we haven't had stimulus talks. Uh, and you can see basically where we are going. We are going slowly to the downside. Next time we're going to talk about uh, stimulus or something like that, this is probably going to pop to the upside. So let's look at natural gas. So as you can see, we are just doing more of the same. Um, I kind of said on, on Thursday and on, on Wednesday as well, that this is just a continuation of the same moves that natural gas had been do has been doing for the last few months. So all the way back to the end of October or the beginning of November, we topped in this market at 3.389, fell down, rallied, fell down, rallied, and so on and so on. And we're just seeing a continuation. We're actually starting to trade sideways at this moment, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to test the 200 moving average at some point. We're getting out of the winter months in only a short period of time. And um, if this was going to pop to the upside, it would have happened already. So a break below the 200 moving average opens the door to roughly uh, 2.1 and then to 2 and to all the way down to 1.5. That is most likely where we're going to head to. So, yes, I haven't traded this market since we basically were there. I was pretty sure that when we hit the 200 moving average that we were going to rally. That did happen. Uh, question was whether or not we were going to rally above the 50. That did not happen. So we have tested the 50 and the 20 several times. It has broken down every single time. And um, this just looks like uh, another continuation. So the bottom of this market is definitely 200 moving average at the moment. So at 2.3. If we have to be break below that, then we are going to go much, much lower. So let's look at copper. So copper broke down all the way down to the 200 moving average. No, not the 200 moving average. The 50 moving average at the 3.53 and settled there. So I am expecting a rally in copper. I did expect it actually uh, before that. I but, uh, but uh, US dollar was appreciating and that was basically working against this market and most of the other precious metals. So at this moment, we have settled right above the 50 moving average, actually a perfect place in order to, to buy this. So target here is 3.75 with a stop loss right underneath this previous spike here. So roughly at uh, 3.47, that's where you should Put your stop loss and a target of these very highs. I would not put a, a whole lot of leverage into this. This is just um, if the US dollar, for example, starts to um, depreciate, then you will see this spike to the upside. You can look at the technical indicators as well. They are still very bearish, so they have not turned around. You can look at the four hour chart and one hour chart to basically see when this starts to turn around. 
For example, the four hour chart will be really helpful in this case. So I hope you found this helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing. Hit the like button and the bell button to see our newest videos. And you're welcome to join us over at Patreon, where you can get the access to this full technical analysis. For example, the rest of the commodities and precious metals analysis, the indices, and so on. So good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.